Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video and this is going to be a little bit different again. So this video I will show you all about my antique Singer sewing machine and also about this very cool set that I found a while ago in an antique store. Now if you follow me on Instagram you may have seen this already. Um, it is a metal box with some of the extra new, new attachments that came with some of these antique machines. So the great thing about these is that they're supposed to make your work easier. So I'm definitely going to give them all a try and see what they can actually do. Now I have made some test pieces out of bed sheets again. You know how much I like sewing with bed sheets and some colorful threads so I can actually see a little bit better about what I'm doing when I'm trying all this out. Now let's start talking about the machine itself. This machine is actually from the 10th of June in 1910. And the reason I know this is because it has a serial number on it and you can actually look it up in the Singer serial number directory, that's what it's called. And that way it will show you exactly when it was finished in the factory and sent out for export. So in my case, it is a nice and old machine, over a hundred years old, and it is in such a good state. The lady that I bought this from had been using it in day-to-day -day sewing, and she even gave me bottles of machine oil, which are super, super important. And also some oil for the wood itself, so I've been trying to do that regularly as well to keep that wood nice and clean. Now the machine itself I barely had to clean because, as I said, she had taken such good care of it. Um, I do feel the belt needs a replacement soon because it's drying out a little bit. But other than that, this machine works so well and it's so sturdy. It can sew through almost anything. So I love this as my day-to-day -day sewing. Um, I've also shown you my hand crank machine, this one. And I do love this machine as well because it's a beautiful machine. But the problem is I have an injury on my hand which makes hand sewing and doing things like cranking a machine for a long time it makes it a little bit more painful so i don't like to use that one for big projects because this one uses my feet and then i have both of my hands free to actually guide my sewing now i think it is time to get started on threading this machine and then i'll show you what all these cool bits and pieces can do Okay, now that the machine is all threaded, I'm going to first check if my tension is all right. And this is my standard foot. This is the one I use for anything and everything. I have to say, I don't actually change out my feet too much. Let's see. Well, that looks like it normally does. Okay, so let's get started on the first sewing foot, and that is the ruffler foot. I've taken the needle out because this one needs a little bit more to get attached. It has two points. This one goes here, and this one goes on a little screw bit at the top, like so. And then I can put the needle back in. Then let's see what magic this thing can do. So this was actually the one I was most excited about because these are often missing from these sets. And I do ruffle a lot, so anything that can help me is more than welcome. Okay, let's try that. Let's 
see, it's not really doing anything. Oh, wait. Ha. Huh. Not paying attention. This one needs to go in between here. I accidentally put it underneath. So it goes in between these, this layer, and the one underneath. Okay, let's see. There's something. It's just not as dramatic as I thought it'd be. Why are we being so not so dramatic? Well, unfortunately, my rough lift hood isn't working. I have tried everything. I have tried oiling it. I have tried uh, all the other tricks to readjust the screws and everything. But I feel like maybe it is not quite right with my machine or it's, it's just dead. So, unfortunately, this one does not work. But the whole cool thing about a ruffler is that it's going to make the ruffles for you. So, I am definitely going to scour the internet to find one that's actually going to work so maybe just a singer one um when i looked online this is obviously a different brand but when i looked online i actually found some singer ones that looked way easier to use and pretty sturdy so i'm going to give that a try now this one is done so for now but i have a very cool one that is this one and this is the tucker foot now this one promises to be a very good one. Now, I really like some tucks every now and then. I've made some projects with them in the past, and they're always so difficult to get nice and straight and even. So this tucker foot promises to help with that. So let's attach it to the machine and see how it works. This one is a lot easier. It's just one piece of attachment. Screw in. Okay, now a little up close, as you can see, this machine has some uh, numbers on there. So here it actually says the word tuck, and here it says the word space. So what we're going to do is this can be moved to adjust your tucks. So I unloosen the screw, and then what I can do is I can either move the really big one, and this is actually going to be the space between the tucks. Let's put that at three. And then this is going to be the actual size of the tuck. So a bit panicky. Let's do that at four. And then we'll have this one at three. Okay, tighten the screw again. And then these can't move anymore. Now it's time to try and sew with this. Here I have one of my test pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the begin fold. And you can iron this. I'm just going to fold it for now. And then you slide it in underneath the foot there, like so. Then push it down. Oh, make sure your threads are actually to the max. Let's adjust my size. Okay, well let's see how this one turns out. Let me grab my thread here. And I don't know if you can see it properly, but what it does, it is making an indentation here to the side, and this is actually the new folding line. So that way it is completely parallel to what you've sewn and you're going to get nicely even space tucks. So one tuck is done and now here we have that faint indentation and that's your guide for the next one. So we're going to fold it onto the new line. I'm definitely very happy with this after disappointment of the ruffler. Okay. It's all done, and here we go again. And as you can see, it's making the indentation again over here. And now we have two evenly spaced tucks and another line of where the next one's going to be. So as you can see, this one's actually very handy. I really like it because it's going to make everything nice and easy 
and it kind of takes the guesswork out of the tux. So this is definitely a foot I'll be using more often. It's just going to make life so much easier. Now there's one more foot I'm going to show you and that is the rolled hem foot. Now that one is a little bit more like all the other ones but it also came with a set so we're going to give it a try. Um, I actually haven't used it yet um, on my modern machine even. I like doing the tiny rolled hems by hand or just double stitch. So let's go see how that one works out. Okay, threads go to the side. I've already prepared a rolled hem with my iron, so I just ironed two small rolls in that because I read somewhere that it helps. So uh, let's go give it a try. Now, first, you put this underneath, put your needle in, and then we can finagle this into that weird turn Let's see okay let's give it a try oh, oh. you definitely need to keep a hold of your hem And this is what it looks like. Now it's actually not bad. It's it's a bit wonky, but that's kind of logic because I'm trying to figure this out. I do think that with some practicing, this might be a very good foot to try, especially when you have a lot of like tiny, tiny hems to do like this, because by hand, these take a lot longer. So this one is definitely also a success. Now that I've tried out all of my sewing feet, I actually know which ones I can and cannot use in the future. And like I said, the ruffler sounds super interesting. So I'm definitely going to try and find a good replacement for it because it is going to save me so much work if I can actually find one that works. Now, I have to say, I'm so glad with this machine. It just makes me so happy because it is an absolute workhorse. It is so old but it works like it's brand new because the people that have owned this before me definitely took good care of it. So some tips with machines like this is when you don't use it very often, make sure it stays well oiled. You do not want to have your machine all seized up because you're not using enough oil. Some people don't even realize that machines do need oil, but yes, they do. Don't put too much though. It's always better to start with a little. Now, as you may have noticed, I actually made a little guide on my sewing machine because the plate does not have a guide on your seam allowance. Some people just guess it. Some people just put baselines on where it's supposed to be. I actually like doing it this way because it kind of makes it a mix between my modern machine and this antique machine. Now, this machine has been so well taken care of, so I think it's going to last another 100 years, but we'll see about that. Um, I'm definitely going to use it for way more projects, so you'll see plenty of this one in the future. I have to say, there are so many cool attachments, even for these older machines. So if you're interested, definitely do some Googling and I'm sure you can find some that fit your machine as well. Also, what kind of machine are you sewing on? Are you doing historical sewing as well? Or are you just following my videos because you just like me or you just like my content? Let me know. I'm going to look into what other projects I'll be doing soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, if you're not following me yet, don't forget to like and subscribe so I know you like my content. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers!